ulama will always combine three things because they are addressing fardul ayn. They are addressing what people need to, to, uh, to, to, to have, the bare minimum that every Muslim needs to complete. And for a Muslim to be functional Muslim in any society, they need to make sure that their, their i'tiqad is, is correct, the soundness of their i'tiqad, and the, the correctness of their action, and the cleanliness of their heart. These are three things. الاعتقاد, القلب, without these three, uh, the person will not be functional and there will be a problem. There will be a genuine problem. So الاعتقاد, the soundness of the belief means that they know what is what are they worshipping and why are they submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many problems, unlike what, what people might presume, many problems that happen today happen because of that problem, that essential thing. Not that we, 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 we say that Muslims today have, uh, have left the i'tiqad. No, but they don't understand. They don't understand what it means to say la ilaha illallah. Because la ilaha illallah means the authority in my life that tells me what is halal and haram, what is right and wrong is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, we will not find, if we, if we do that, we will, we will not find Muslims who will say, well, the deen says this, but it doesn't make sense to me. Or the Quran is saying this, but it doesn't say it doesn't make any sense to me. We find a lot of people saying that today. Well, uh, things don't make sense to me. Well, you can you can strive to to make them make sense to you, but remember that not everything around you will make sense to you. Uh, not everything that you embrace makes sense to you. Like why would why would someone, for example, like a specific color? Well, sometimes it doesn't make sense. Like if you go to Sigmund Freud, uh, he might give, try to give you some crazy. Uh, uh, explanation and say this is possibly because of some kind of lower desire and that reminds them of some <laughs> some uh, uh, experience some lowly experience they had in the past and that's uh, that's triggering that and because of that uh, old uh, attachment it is it is uh, it is uh, representing itself in a, in a different way but definitely there are loads of things in life that do not make sense do not make rational sense to us but still we believe in them because we as human beings are composed of something beyond just the mind not just the, 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 the rational power. We have emotional power. We have many other things. Anyway, without spending too much time on that. So the soundness of belief and the correctness of our actions is very important. That, and when we say that the amal has to be sound or has to be valid, the validity of action, it means it has to be muafiqan li shara. It has to be in accordance to the shara, to the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the work of the fuqaha. The fuqaha tell us what is valid and what is not, but they cannot tell us what is accepted and what is not. No faqih can ever tell me if salah, my salah is accepted, if my hajj is accepted, but they can tell me, look, if you, were, if you spend on your hajj from haram, most likely it's not going to be accepted. But the faqih is not saying that from his mind. He's saying that because there is a text that says that. Imagine if someone is spending a million dollars to go to hajj, and on his way to hajj, he, he took five, six people with him, and they came back and he, uh, he did like a lot of expenditure on that hajj, but it's, it's haram money and somebody is struggling and he just like uh, uh, spent a small budget on their hajj. So apparently the one who lavishly spent on their hajj, their hajj is more like, is, uh, he, he put a lot of more sacrifice. Well, it, it sounds like that, but if it's from haram, the Sharia tells us that's not, not acceptable. Anyway, the ulama in the past have always seen that there is a union between the soundness of i'tiqa, the correctness of action, and the cleanliness of the heart. And we always call, call that, call these ulum al-shari'a, the three essential ulum of sharia. Anything else in the ulum, any other sciences, the whole Islamic tradition is based on how can we understand these three sciences. These three ulum, we call them ulum al-maqasid, ulum al-maqasid, the sciences, of, the objective sciences. We're studying everything so that in the end, uh, we're studying uh, uh, for example, you're studying grammar, Arabic grammar, Nahu, or Sarf, or Balagha, or Arud, or uh, Adab, or studying uh, uh, Lugha, or studying Ilm al Wada, you're studying Mantiq, you're studying all of these ulum in order to, in the end, to deal with the Quran. And why do I need to deal with the Quran? In order to be able to extract from the Quran the ahkam, the rulings that I act by and live by in my day-to-day -day life. Well, therefore, I'm not studying now because I like to keep saying, uh, 
في الدار زيد زيد في الدار I'm, I'm not keen on studying نحو because I, I want to repeat these grammatical sentences and grammatical examples for the sake of it I'm studying that so that I understand the Quran because understanding the Quran will enable me to know what is it that Allah wants me to practice right so fiqh is one of ulum al maqasid was one of these kind of end sciences and then we have i'tiqad aqida or tawhid or uh, is one of the end sciences as well and when when i say aqida i'm not talking about kalam i'm not talking about dialectic theology dialectic theology is a ilm is a science that is there to defend the i'tiqad to defend it. it's it's like a shield you put in order to protect people's deen from confusion that is normally put around on on them from people who are, are outside the deen. Now someone says, oh, why do you need to believe in one God? There is a problem with your Iman in this and this and that. Then the mutakallim, the theologian, the dialectic theologian will stand up and say, no, 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 there is a fault. There is a fault in your, in your understanding. But mantiq, in essence, is there to teach us the basics of what is coherent and what is not coherent in our, in our thinking. So that when I, I think correctly, I will not take things blindly and when i don't take things blindly i will be able to i will be able to uh, 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 embrace the proper i'tiqad i will be free from taqlid i'll be free from what from imitation from blind imitation and should not be muqallid in i'tiqad in in beliefs we should not be muqallid you should not just say well i believe in one god why do you believe in one god i just believe i had people saying uh, we're Muslims. I grew up in Tunisia or I grew up in Egypt. And, uh, you know, people were saying, we're Muslims. Khalas, Bismillah, we're Muslims, we're Muslims. Uh, that's, that doesn't work. You need to have at least, or you should have at least one essential dalil, one essential proof, intellectual proof. Why do you believe in one God? Oh, because look, the, <laughs> this whole universe, its movements, its uh, stillness, its thing, its, like, its activity cannot occur by itself. There must be a reason behind it. And then behind this reason, there must be a mover and shaker. If I cannot believe that things move by themselves, then how can I believe that this whole universe has come from nothing? Someone must have brought it. And then this must be Allah. That's very enough. It's more than enough for a, for a ammi, right? So we study all the uloom in order to, in the end, to have that sound i'tiqad. We study the other uloom so that in the end, we know what does Allah want us to practice. So that, that's what which we call fiqh, right? And then we study all the uloom, all the other uloom, including fiqh. Look at that. Including fiqh and i'tiqad so that in the end, we have a clean heart. We have a clean heart. Why am I studying salah? So that salah teaches me humbleness, humility. Why am I learning i'tiqad? So that I don't... I know that uh, that everything happens in the, with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything happens with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no need for me to envy one brother who has a, a child and I don't have one. Uh, why, why do I need to learn about uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wahidun la sharika la? That, so that I, uh, I understand that if he's wahidun la sharika la, if he's one and there is no partner and there is no one similar to him in his, uh, in his actions, la sharika lahu, no one is like unto him in his entity, in his actions and his attributes, then I know that his wisdom is unique. So when I don't understand his wisdom, it must be because it's a unique wisdom. So no one can fathom what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them. Therefore, I might not be able to understand why an earthquake happens in Turkey or in Syria, why there is so much suffering in the world, but I understand that it is from Rabbun Hakim. It's from a wise God. And he is the Hakim who is also what? Rahim. He is Hakim and Rahim. These go hand in hand. He is not like Rahim at certain times, merciful at certain times, and then Hakim at other times. He is not Hakim at, at some times and then Rahim at other times. No, he is Hakim and Rahim at the same time. Rahmatuhu aynu hikmati. Wa hikmatuhu aynu rahmati. His mercy is exactly his wisdom and his wisdom is exactly his mercy.